Hi, everybody. How you doing? It's another episode of the original Intersex Connect Live. I'm Justin Benedict. I know how to say that word, Benedict. Justin Benedict, I'm your host today. And thanks so much for joining us today. We're going to do an episode that deals with um, unnecessary cosmetic surgery on children. Um, But it's not intersex surgery that we're going to be talking about. we're going to be talking about circumcision and I don't want people to confuse the importance of intersex surgeries on non-consenting children where sex is assigned to the child that there's 8 million people alive today that have been, had that surgery without their knowledge or consent. And we're not comparing the two, but what I am talking about is unnecessary cosmetic surgery on children boys if it was done to girls it would be all over the newspaper and everybody would be all upset now i'm not preaching from a seat high and mighty i had my son circumcised because it's the thing to do isn't it it's just like automatic you know you don't even think about it oh you're gonna get insert of course you are because that's what everybody does and so i've apologized to my son for that um but um So I want to bring awareness to the situation and try, I can't correct the mistakes that I've made, but I can help other people not make the same mistake I did. So um, today we brought in a guest and I forgot the most important question I ask everybody is, how do you pronounce your name? Oh, (laughs) no. Um, I believe it's Adkinson, John Adkinson. And um, John started his professional life in the uh, computer business in the 80s and in 2005 he became a father and which unexpectedly expanded his aims in life so suddenly life got bigger for him when he had children he now considers himself an avid advocate for genital autonomy and you may think of that as inactivism which is a term used for those who are activists for people to maintain the intact uh, where'd I go? Uh, anyway, activists for, t- activists for people to maintain intact body, also referred to as anti circumcision activists. John has created many resources independently, as well as involvement with se- several such groups, such as the Bodyguards, which was originally named. Oh, this thing is bad, huh? Originally called the Coalition for Abandonment of Sexual Mutilation, um, Bloodstained Men, and Your Whole Baby. Um, To name a few, John's created a website, genitalautonomysociety.org and twostomps.org, and has distributed educational material and on and on and on. John has been a very busy person. Um, And... He does involve himself with individuals to market individual items such as books, documentaries, informational websites to the public. And so if we can bring John in, that would be awesome. Hi, John. How you doing? Hi, hey, Joseph. Good. Thanks for having me here. You bet. Did I pronounce your last name correct? It's Adkisson. It doesn't Ad have the Kisson. N before the S. Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, the so, most common spelling is Adkinson. And that's yes. Really cool. I apologize for not I asking swear. for the 15 minutes that we sat there <laughs> trying to figure out what we were supposed to talk about. Um, okay. My apologies. So um, before we get going, um, I do want to explain that neither one of us are official representatives of Bloodstained Men. We are supporters sure. of Bloodstained Men and um, do everything we can to help them in their goal. Um, and so anyway going on john has taught me a lot about circumcision and um so basically i I want to get a good understanding of like how this all started and where it all started um so in my mind and i don't know if i'm accurate or not circumcision started back in the old biblical days and it was done by what would now be hasidic jews um, is that correct, or am I like miles away from it? <laughs> well, technically, as far as we can tell, uh, it started before uh, Abraham, right? Uh, before right. Abraham was supposedly told to, you know, uh, circumcise the 
foreskin or right. circumcised the flesh of the foreskin as, as I've seen it in, in biblical texts and the Torah. Um, but there's a book out uh, by Rosemary Romberg. Um, she passed away not too long ago, but, um, and there's a second edition of that now. I, I helped her and some other people, Ulf Dunkel finish it off. Uh, so it's available on, on Amazon and stuff like that. But um, as, as far as we could tell, it, it was happening before written uh, writing happened before any kind of written history. Right. And really, if you if you look at sexual abuse in general, it's, it even occurs in uh, in the wild, you know, in, in wildlife. I mean, just the other day, I saw uh, uh, um, something going at it with a penguin. Okay, so it's, yeah. it's pretty it's pretty disturbing. And right. uh, so you know. It, the 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 book uh, Rosemary um, posits some ideas about why it started in the first place, and it really comes down to one thing: uh, control, uh, trying to control sexuality, and uh, and, and so it, it, it was it's mainly kind of built in. it's what back then as well as now it was mainly to um, minimize masturbation. Is that right? Well, according to written um, information from Dr. Kellogg, and that's the same Dr. Kellogg that's related to Kellogg's Corn Flakes and the Kellogg's Corporation. Um, he and his brother invented Corn Flakes, but Dr. Kellogg, along with some other doctors of that time, thought that it would um, reduce you know, masturbation or touching yourself down there. And he, and he wasn't he wasn't sexist about it. He was also picking on girls too. <laughs> As disturbing as I know a lot that is to a lot of people, but um, it when you learn about how the anatomy develops down there, and you, you can learn you learn about when you actually study intersex stuff, um, that is, things happen down there that kind of necessitate that we touch ourselves down there. Um, so it, it's actually a very normal and thing that ha needs to be done, um, but it, right. it, 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 it disturbs people. So back then during the puritanical area. They, they thought that they needed to stop that because it caused all these illnesses. <laughs> right. So dark ages thinking anyway. And uh, I'm just like confused or, or amazed or I don't know the right word that somehow it got from these biblical times and not to, to help children or boys, girls and boys not masturbate so much or um how it became mainstream in america that a it's a religious practice mostly and yep. but suddenly like everybody's doing it yeah yep. up, up to the late 1800s no boy no man all the all the founders were were intact it was not a, a thing uh, until uh, it, it really started ramping up, and you can actually look this up, look at um, charts on 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 this. Um, it really ramped up around World War II. Um, there were around then there was there was ideas about it reducing syphilis, which is actually wrong. Yeah. <laughs> new, new studies really disproved that from Denmark and Canada very recently, actually. And um, but it it kind of is the French fries of the hospitals because. When you look at how birth started becoming medicalized and, be, and becoming a regular thing mm -hmm. in, in the hospitals, so did circumcision. Um, because what they started doing is asking parents, well, do you want your son circumcised? You know, you, you just had a baby. Do you want him circumcised? Right. Yes or no? And it, it kind of goes like, well, do you want fries with that? Yeah, you and want so, circumcision with that? Yeah, <laughs> it, it's, it's, you know, it, it kind of yeah. comes across as if it's an upgrade. Hey, you want uh, leather seats with your car? Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, well, kind of, yeah, I kind of do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's a sales technique. And an intact America did a study not too long ago that found that 94% of U.S. hospitals still do that. And they don't just do it once, but they actually will do it several times. So when it kind of comes across as a, as a pressure sales technique, you just, you know, you ask and ask and ask. And, well, I guess if you think that's a good idea, you know, if they're asking, it's kind of assumed that, you know, it must be a good idea if, if these medical professionals are asking because, then that you know, just to, just to ask means well, it's a good thing, don't you want to do it? Well, and if you say no, they 
they are like, what? What do you mean? Yeah. No, everybody some, does it. Some do. There, there are a lot of medical professionals out there that uh, totally agree with us in uh, but a lot of them just won't speak out because of fear of losing their job and stuff. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, the Society of Pediatric Urology could make your life very difficult if you were a doctor that spoke out against that. Mm -hmm. um, so, but that's just amazing and horrifying and things of that nature. Yeah, um, and my, my, my own wife, uh, her OB um, asked her the question and she responded in an inquisitive way and he answered, he didn't give any information at all. Uh, luck, luckily, she didn't feel comfortable with him in the first place. So she changed to a midwife and the midwife provided her information. And, and after she read it, she she was like during the tears and she's like, John, you got to see this. I'm like, I, I don't really, I was like, I don't care. I'm fine with whatever you think needs to be done. Um, or not done, <laughs> uh, but she's like, no, you already had to make this decision with me. I'm not, I'm not doing this by myself, and that started me down the rabbit hole. And I was 35 years old here, so right. Um, and this, this, so that's over. My oldest son is 16, so that was nearly 17 years ago, and uh, it, it didn't just happen overnight for me that I was like a switch happened, and I'm like totally against it. Now, I mean, over time, I've learned more and more and more and more about it. And the more that I've learned about it, the more I absolutely hate about it. And, and that expanded, you know, n not just with male circumcision, but it expanded. You know, I, I always thought that female genital mutilation was bad because, hey, that's the words I use, right? So it's right. like, you know, <laughs> they didn't use circumcision, which a lot of yes. people think of as, as a good word. Um, so I just that was the words that were being passed around. So that's the propaganda that goes along. But I also, um, just so people know, you know I, I'm wearing the shirt, but again, I'm not a member. I'm not a board member. I'm, I'm friends with them and I've actually protested. And Brother K, um, he actually hand, gave me one of his old parents' pants to protest with. I still have them and I proudly yeah. wear them. Find Brother K on Facebook. Yeah, but when I, did the, when I did that protest with him, I met an intersex person. Uh, yeah, there's Brian Harity there. Um, and sh uh, that intersex person told me their story. And that got me down that rabbit hole. And my understanding of the intersex situations um, expanded too. So it, the, the whole genital cutting ritual stuff has just piled up more and more in my head over time. I can imagine. Um, interesting that... Um... You were able to get that information before your child was circumcised, and yeah. that <laughs> it um, affected you in a way that you have. I don't know if I could say you actually dedicated your entire life because you still have a job and have to earn a living and things like that, but you have um, dedicated an enormous amount of time for um, being an activist and. Uh, yeah. When you first started, um, because you probably didn't know the word inactivist when you first got going into this, um, was it difficult to find people that supported your opinion in groups or did you like, because like intersex people, we talk about intersex island all the time and it's the time where you realize you're intersex and then you suddenly realize that they're, you're not the only one. Yeah. And yeah. it's kind of like that. Did was there was it difficult to find other people that believed as you did? Uh, in person, absolutely. Uh, the the internet and the social media has really changed that for me as well as everyone else. Uh, it, you know, there's communities of thousands and thousands and thousands of people um, that believe in being you know, leaving children intact, not cutting the genitals. So, and I've, I've joined those and I, I've, uh, have become, you know, a major contributor to these groups on various social medias. So. Right. Um, there's a, a worldwide group that suddenly the name escapes me. The, um, the, the bodyguards, that um, one. Uh, which was called the International Coalition for Abandonment of Sexual Mutilation. And, uh, and I was I'm proud to have been invited to be part of that uh, group. And we started uh, over a year and a half ago now um, having regular meetings uh, every month. Uh, these people are from Australia, uh, 
New Zealand. We actually had an, an intersex person from New Zealand uh, join our our group. Uh, people in several places in, in Europe. Uh, uh, Dr. Fami from Egypt. Um, uh, and some African people. There's some limitations on internet connectivity in Africa, but you know, right. everyone yeah. that could pot pot, uh, possibly participate on Zoom got involved. All that that we could invite. So it uh, it was it was really great to get together with all these people and uh, and collaborate. Right. And through that, were you able to find out around the world, like? Other countries, they don't have the same attitude toward circumcision as we do in the United States, do they? No, absolutely not. Um, in you know, in Europe, it's it's almost unheard of. Um, and they uh, quite often you know, I hear stories of people they're finding out that we do this here, uh, and are like just shocked. It's like United States, really? Yeah. <laughs> you're doing that. How backwards um, are you? Oh. Yeah, yeah. And then <laughs> then you hear you hear uh, people in place like japan that's like never ever heard of such a thing at all um yeah in, in places like europe um it's like it's only a jewish thing or maybe muslim thing and so not people will speak up very much about it and it's like well let the jewish people or the muslim people you know figure that out with amongst themselves well here mm -hmm. in the united states um the majority of men that were are cut um are not jewish or have any kind of jewish or muslim um Connections. Right, it has nothing to do with religion. No. And it's and just... places like Iceland and New Zealand, and Iceland and uh, Denmark have actually um, seriously explored banning the practice completely. Um, Iceland had a four-hour debate. Um, you can find it on YouTube, four freaking hours um, of, about uh, banning it. Denmark had a vote in their legislator uh, legislature uh, about it. Um, you can go to check out Intact Denmark and uh, and learn a little bit about that. Uh, unfortunately, the United States uh, got involved in that. And I actually wrote a blog article about this, but during the Obama administration, a law was passed that involves um, international relationships. And that law um, basically says, well, if you speak out, if this country speaks out um, or uh, persecutes people that um, support male circumcision, um, that that could be a, a problem between America and, and you. So that uh, I think that is the main reason why Denmark did not move forward. Let me say that again for the people in the back. They <laughs> actually made it part of the law that if a country is anti-circumcision and they go after people that are anti-circum or that are pro-circumcision, that um, the United States will have a different relationship with them. Yeah, the yeah, it can, it, can affect, it can affect relationships between the United States and, and that country if uh, that country does any kind of persecution of people that uh, do male male circumcision. <laughs> yes, female circumcision, we don't care. But yeah, that's, yeah, uh, that's yeah, that's, and, and, and and you know, I know people are, right away. Just have, you just said that, and a lot of people are gonna say that's totally different. Well, uh, no, it's not. <laughs> there's, there's four types. You can look at the WHO. There's four types of female circumcision. And you said that, you know, it, it would be all the news or whatever um, if it was if it was happening. Well, the fact is, it, it is happening in the United States, believe it or not. It might be happening in behind closed doors and all that. But um, it, they're called the Duity Bora tribe. And they actually, the feds um, tried to prosecute a woman that was involved one woman as well as some other people that were involved or ha are probably still involved in doing a, a form of female circumcision now it's really really minor it's like they get a drop of blood and that makes it kosher and stuff like that and it doesn't really i mean maybe it leaves some scar tissue but it doesn't modify the genitalia so but when you get right down to it the ethical discussion is the same right Regardless of how much, you know, we don't need to have a, an oppression Olympics here. It's right. The, the ethical issue is still the same. Right. It's like human rights for all kind of thing. Um, it's either human rights for everybody or it's not human rights for all. And you're kidding yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. Anyway, real quick. Hi to Juliana. And uh, but I did want to mention the um, 
situation in Australia, I think it was a month ago, maybe a couple of weeks ago, mm. um, where somebody went and found a surgeon or a doctor to do a um, circumcision on their child, which is like unheard of in Australia, and the child died. Yep. And that, there were two boys, actually, and one, the other one got botched pretty bad. Yeah. Um, so I hate to go there because um, it's trigger warning stuff in my brain. Um, <laughs> because yeah. circumcision doesn't always go right, does it? Mm -hmm. Because it's not always, A, it's not always done by a surgeon. Yeah. And um, yeah. even even if it is done by a surgeon, it's it, you're dealing with a very small body part and it's so easy to go wrong you the the surgeons don't really know how much got up because they don't know how much you're going to grow into it right at that point i mean you're you you know you're you're intersect and you you know how intersex just because mm. of intersex genitalia how genitalia develops while in yes. utero well who says that the it stops uh, developing after you're outside of the the uterus. It's, it's continuing well, yeah, to develop. But everything else is developing still, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> they, they they talk about the uh, right. hidden penis or buried penis. Um, right. A lot of times, that's just the penis is still developing. So it's kind of like it's down low, below the you know fold and everything like that. And it's really difficult to circumcise or remove the prepuce of right. that baby boy um, because you can't. You know, it's it's buried. It's like if you wait a few years, well, it might not be buried anymore because it's still growing. <laughs> right. And then if you wait a few years, you could wait a few more and let them decide for themselves. Yeah, just a thought. <laughs> so, yeah. all right, we've got all sorts of people in here. What do we got? Any blade that touches genitalia is mutilation. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like, well, some people do like to have cosmetic surgery on their genitalia, which is perfectly fine. Um, and I don't not support that idea. Um, but any blade that touches genitalia with the full, without the full knowledge and consent of the person it's touching, that is absolutely mutilation and should be against the law everywhere. And, so. and and as far as I'm concerned, if you're doing it to a child, it's sexual battery of a minor. Uh, absolutely. Because, well, and not to get, eh, screw the details. If, you, if, you're still <laughs> with, if you're still with us and, and you're listening, because the actual process of doing the um, circumcision, the first thing they do is retract the foreskin is that correct mind if i show this yes go ahead i was hoping you're going to pull that out yeah so, yeah. so i mean you, it's the it's, knitted penis oh. yeah <laughs> it's my mock it's my mock penis um it, it's not perfect because it doesn't it doesn't have the, the it's not stretchy it doesn't squeeze up here at the end like it you know everybody does on the real thing but one of the first parts of the procedure they typically do is they stick a blunt probe down in order to separate the inner mucosa of the of the prepuce or the foreskin as it's often referred to and the glands because those are adhered together um, during early childhood and it slowly separates the synechia breaks down and it slowly separates over time so yeah that's one of the one of the steps they're actually inserting something into the genitalia right that's the first step and they don't do it with any painkillers um, they're getting better and better about using painkillers um, but better, yeah, better. I, um, I watched one where they stuck yeah. the needle at the base of the penis and, and it's still extremely disturbing and you still hear the babies uh, uh, cry and everything like that. And I, I wouldn't yes. want that done to me. Um, yeah, it's horrible to think about um, because when they're in there separating the glands and whatnot, they're, they might be removing glands as well, yes? Yeah. Yep. And yeah, it, it, it could it could end up with chunks of the glands missing over time. And so, what's the the purpose or benefit of having a pupus? A prepuce. <laughs> uh, well, first of all, uh, it it it, it uh, keeps the the glands moist um, and smooth. Uh, you can find pictures on um, circumcisionharm.org, for example. I mean. 
not tape for work type of place to go. But uh, if you want to see real images of things, you know, that's that's all supposed to be moist and smooth and it's supposed to be an internal organ. It's kind of like your tongue inside of your mouth. It only comes out when when it, you need it to or it's you know, supposed to come out. Um, and for me, the my biggest well, I don't know, that's my I, my second biggest thing is the rolling mechanism. It's a it's a fold of tissue. It's not just a flap of tissue like your eyelid. It's a fold of tissue. And when things happen, it unrolls, as you can see down the way. And that's necessary to accommodate erections. And if the tissue isn't there, then it has to pull the skin from somewhere else. You might have, you know, there's a little bit of stretchiness to skin, yes, but that stretchiness is limited, right? And if you're a grower instead of a shower, <laughs> <laughs> um, you're pulling up on things like your scrotum and uh, and on your um, on your the bottom base of your stomach, which ends up causing things to bend. And if you know uh, how, how you get wood, uh, yeah. it's not very bendable of wood. <laughs> it's not right. supposed to be bent. So is that what is that what Peroni's disease is? Are you familiar with that? Uh, it's having a unnatural curve in your penis and. They can now fix it. Yeah, and there's. I'm like, well, how many of those were caused by circumcision in the first? Yeah, place? yeah. Well, the way I've seen it presented is that there's like a buildup inside um, around the corpus cavernosum that makes it, you know, get bigger one side or the other. But what I've often seen and what men have come often complained about is because they get they don't get cut, you know, at a perfectly 90 degree angle. A good. Uh, good engineer understands this, um, then you end up, you know, if they cut this way or this way too much, then one side ends up being tighter than the other. So you end up, yeah, you end up getting a little bit of a curvature because it's too tight on one side or another. Right. So I, I don't think that um, that qualifies as Peyronie's disease. Um, and who no, knows? Whether, I don't know. I, I don't know either. I was just asking. Yeah. Um, who knows whether they're being uh, diagnosed properly. Right. But there's 90 different nerve endings or something like that I was reading about. Did, are you oh, with um, that? so you can watch the American Circumcision documentary. Um, it talks a little about this, but it's, it's fine touch nerves. And uh, and the documentary refers to the Sorrell study, S-O-R-R-E-L-L, -L E. Oh, ass, I think. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sorrels. Spell that again? Oh. <laughs> R-R-E-L-L-S. Yeah, Sorrel study. Um, but yeah, it's, and there's there's multiple accounts that come up about this. And, and one of the fa favorite things are the pro cut um, side of this likes to attack as a 20,000 nerve endings. Some people say more, some people say less, but uh, you know, Meisner's corpuscles is fine touch nerve endings and it's kind of like the nerve endings you feel in your hand, All right? When you just run your fingers right. over your hand real lightly, it you, it feels very different than if you run fingers over your hand on the other side, right? Mm. It, because it's a matter of how many Meisner's corpuscles are in that end. Kind of like the bottom of your foot. Yeah, and when you look at the Charles study, it, it shows that you know, particularly around the frenulum, there's a lot right there, and then it kind of just it it's less as it goes down the 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 penis. Um, the problem is is that's the area that is typically attacked the most by things like um, the gumco clamp or Prostabel. These are these are um, tools that are used. Uh, they they were invented to try to protect the glands when you do a circumcision. But when you when you end up cutting down here because of the bottom of the bell, you end up cutting this part instead of this part, right? So when you when you look at enough <laughs> like I have, you'll see that some men have a lot of mucosal tissue here, and some will have very little. And I really feel bad for the ones that have very little because that mucosal tissue is the is the most valuable part of it all that's where all the the nerve endings are that you're talking about right uh, yeah yeah and you can see the pictures on the sorrel study but right but if it was a way to stop masturbation to begin with um wasn't that kind of the point to remove that the sensation and feeling that was available well, if you actually look at uh, Kellogg's writings it's it's also um he actually he actually said to not use any kind of um, anesthesia because you want the child to remember. 
<laughs> because it creates a psychological effect to not touch that area down there. Kind of like a pre punishment. Lovely. Lovely. Yeah. yeah. And yet, until 1978, they didn't think that children could feel pain at all. Yeah. <laughs> Taylor Cole and Lockwood or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> but all my surgeries were done without pain relief. Really. They did put me to sleep with ether gas, which is a mm. real treat someday if you want to yeah. know what suffocation is like. Mm. Um, <laughs> But after that, that was it. Um, all right, so I just lost my train of thought a little bit. So give me a second because. Um, well, you were you were talking about how why it's become so pervasive. Oh, right? yeah. So. Right. Um, and you kind of covered the the religious aspect of it. Um, also, there's been times in history where um, people do it because the wealthy were doing it. Right? It used to be thought of as only you know wealthy could afford to do it or whatever, and so you want to be like the wealthy or whatever. So you know, right. it's like a well, lot the wealthy are doing it. That must be good, right? So do you think the reason it still continues today is more of a financial motivation than anything if, else? Uh, to a large extent, if you look at um, the UK, Australia, and Canada, they're kind of all related. If you know, this. yeah, uh, they, they all have. They also They've have all been invaded. Uh. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> they all they also all have universal health care, unlike the um, United States. The United States is very much capitalistic health care. Yeah. Um, and so they have um, universal health care plans. So they cut out circumcision from their their health care medical insurance. Um, the UK cut it out back in like in the 1950s, right when really? the NHS was first created, and uh, and things just dove uh, along with that uh we're not paying thing. for that <laughs> yeah, canada and australia you know we're much later in the game um and now we're trying to cut it out here in the united states um the last state uh, i think it was south carolina um recently decided to um include it in their medicaid because it's a prophylactic measure for hiv well shortly after the studies from denmark and canada that basically say, well, that's not true, um, came out. Because <laughs> um, that whole idea that it's prophylactic came from um, studies in Africa um, of adults. So it's there's a lot of yeah. issues with those studies. It's covered by Bryant Earp, um, EARP, um, and it's covered in the American Circumcision documentary. And you can find a lot of other feedback about those studies from Africa. Right. So actually, I, I remembered where I was trying to go, I think. <laughs> um, or did I? It's a rough day. Apparently, I should have had more coffee. <laughs> um, but um, going off the, the financial incentives for this, um, what kind of blowback are you getting for being an, an activist and where is it coming from uh well my wife and i have lost friends and family members over this um some have gone forward with getting their child cut even though we tried to give them all sorts of information um and when, when i decided to come out in the early part of 2018 i kind of suspected that would happen um but I, I decided that I've got to, I've got to do this um, because over time, um, more and more men are going to realize what was done to them and 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 accept the fact that they're harmed by this. And uh, I've got to be able to say to them that you know, I've been doing what I can to try to protect the next generation. Uh, and I'm pretty sure this has affected my my career. Um, I've spent most of my life doing corporate IT work work with major, major corporations um, on major, major data center stuff most of my life. And uh, and ever since I started coming out, uh, it's it hasn't been easy to try to get work in that arena. There's other things going on in my life now, too, that kind of makes it difficult to have a full time job. But so that's why I'm doing a gig economy type stuff instead. Yeah. That's all right, though. Um... So there has been repercussions and um, 
do you think that they're coming from being because i mean somebody's doing these repercussions and i've suffered some repercussions myself and i know who i blame but um i'm trying to find out who you blame <laughs> with that telling you who i blame first um, <laughs> are there any organizations medical organizations or whatever that um are very unhappy with your work oh i'm sure there are i um so i i pursue three industries if you want to call, call it that way or institutions one is the religious institutions um even even though the catholicism is supposedly against circumcision uh you can go to catholicsagainstcircumcision.org to learn all about that um <laughs> the 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 catholic leadership doesn't talk about it in fact i I've, I've been doing some uber driving and i actually picked up i'm pretty sure yeah it's four four uh, four or five um <sighs> high school students from a catholic school and I usually keep uh, the new edition of this book as well as uh, <laughs> as well as this book. And uh, show that again. I couldn't see it. The uh, it's uh, circumcision scar. Uh, it says Jay Jackson, but I think his real name is something else. He actually he's actually in L.A. too, and I did get to meet him. But um, I asked him, "What is the Catholic stand on circumcision?" One guest. And um, as in, yes, and the others were like, I don't know. It's like, how can you not know? You're, you're a teenager. You're old enough to have children. You should know. Ooh. They should be teaching you this stuff. And, it's, it, you know, it, it's coming. I mean, this, is, this largely comes from religion, particularly, you know, most you know, <laughs> kind right. of circles around religion. So they should be talking about it. Uh, I've actually also pursued people in the Lutheran church because it's, um, that's where my wife is involved, uh -huh. and um, I, I've had two actual very um, upfront talks with uh, with leaders in the in Christian churches, and they say, "Well, they're too afraid to discuss the topic because of being they might be called anti-Semites and end up losing half their congregation." So, yes. um, so I mean, what's telling the truth? What's going to have to happen is is we're going to, people are going to have to turn this around and say, hey, okay, I'm angry that you didn't teach me. I'm angry that you didn't teach me, and I ended up getting my son cut because you didn't teach me about what this is and whether and the importance or non-importance of it is in my religion. So, um, yeah. and that the public education system, they don't talk about genitalia really in sex ed. They talk about um how babies are made <laughs> yeah condoms and abstinence yeah yeah, yeah. they don't talk about yeah. uh you know pleasure side of it all i mean it's no. i get it it's taboo um, um and yeah i, I think I, I think that's the last the last place i have much hope for um getting this information out um, medical institutions and religion they have no excuse not to provide honest information yes but they don't oh, <laughs> in my opinion because no. um, my biggest problem being an intersex advocate is the Society of Pediatric Urology <laughs> because they're the ones that are fighting all the legal bills and things like that. And they got stacks of money that I could never even compare to. Um, and they're like the California bill just got taken off the table last week um, or oh. in the last week. Did you hear about Austin, um, Texas? No, what's going on there? They they made it illegal in that in that town uh, to do intersex normalization surgeries. Really? Yeah. I'll have to look into that. Problem is, is you just drive over to the next town, right? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I know, yeah. but that, that's that, that's, <laughs> that's just progress. Yeah, right? I'll, and, and, I'll uh, take well, thirty steps. Two, two hospitals, Boston Children's and Murray's Children's, that have both you know apologized, and they they're changing, taking some different attitudes i guess to a certain extent about it uh to some extent i'm not totally overjoyed with what they came up with but um it again it's a step and it's kind of like um just having 
conversations about intersex people existing is beneficial, even if the conversation doesn't go the way I hoped it would. Um, at least I planted a seed and someday they'll look at it with an open mind, hopefully. <laughs> and um, we do. we'll go from there. So um, you've been doing quite a bit of inactivism, and um, can you, like, other than reaching out to the church and all that, um, what have you been doing for your inactivism, and what have you found that does work and did, have you found anything it was just like total waste of time and you're sorry you wasted your effort on that um i don't think there's much of anything that's a waste of time um it, but uh what is most effective uh that's another thing to discuss uh it's hard to say honestly what is most effective uh i, I of course i want to reach as many people as possible um with the least amount of effort right <laughs> Well, Everyone wants to be, you, you know, do a lot of TikTok, right? I do. Um, and I, I what I, is your real quick? What is your TikTok? Um, it's uh, here, I'll go and put it in the private chat, but it's ADK ISOJK. Um, right. you can put it in the regular comments if you want instead of the private and, and chat. It's, it's my um, it's also the same handle for Twitter and uh, Instagram. But uh, oh. with uh, with Facebook and YouTube, you just like my name up as long as you type in my my last name correctly adkison there you go so but your tiktok adventures um seem to get a lot of uh comments shall we say <laughs> <laughs> well you know the the i i discovered tiktok uh a while back and um it's been what, a year and a half now um and yeah i have 4400 followers and 397 000 likes um that's yeah. That's, that's good. Pretty good. Uh, I'm not a you know I'm not a popular singer, or, um, a comedian or something like that. It has you know a million some followers something like that. But I you know, I I keep thinking you know this this one day this this whole issue is going to blow out and everyone's going to want to put an end to it so they're going to support each other and and you know we're going to have lots of followers. But uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> in the meantime, um, I discovered TikTok and I discovered that it has a very different algorithm compared to lots of social media platforms. And it's a good algorithm in, in that it busts out of the bubbles, right? You can go to Facebook, you can go to Reddit and whatever, and, and, and talk within groups of other intactivists and well, like rah, rah, rah each other. Yeah, but, and that's all you're ever going to see. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's not changing anyone's mind about right. this that's not getting the information out there to the public um you know i i am thankful i am so thankful that information was given to me right um and i kind of want to pass that forward to others i want to give that information to others and of course a lot of people are already like you know get away from me <laughs> but, yeah. um but the reality is is you know uh, again i'm thankful for the information so i want to give that information to others and i think of it as something that i'm doing good for them as much as they feel like they're you know i'm i'm like uh knocking on the door trying to you know get them a religion <laughs> right yeah that <laughs> yeah like i'm pushing my my uh my beliefs on them so well yeah i i used to push the gay agenda and hand out elton john albums all the time oh no <laughs> <laughs> Go knocking on the door. Hey, have you heard the ladies from Mountain John? I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, no. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's it's trying to figure out the the way to provide the uh, discussion in a way that that these people will identify. It's like um, most people um, have a problem with sexual abuse, right? So mm -hmm. if you talk to them about sexual abuse, and then you kind of go like, well, circumcision or male circumcision or ma ma removing the prep use of a, of a male. Without their consent or medical need, that's also child abuse. Yes. They're like, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, suddenly. You know, and suddenly. and then the cognitive dissonance kicks in, right? Right. So, uh, yeah. Um, it's scary how that <laughs> happens, isn't it? Yeah. When, when you're dealing with, uh, with a nation full of foxes without tails, <laughs> uh, it's really, that's a really tough, tough uh, discussion, tough thing to say. Well, suggest. it's, I get that same cognitive dissonance with um, intersex and transgender people because 
um, you figure there's 8 million children that have received normalization surgery because they didn't look like one sex or the other. And if you figure that they got a 33% chance of getting it right and a 66% chance of getting it wrong, they've surgically created 500,000, more than 500,000 or five, is it 500,000, yeah, 500,000, um, gender non-conforming people, um, transgender, gender non-conforming people. And then everybody else is like, well, you know, that's the parents' decision. They should have been allowed to make that decision. And it's like, what? How? Nice. Did... And they, they're all okay with it. But yeah. then if you talk about it from the transgender perspective, it's like, well, they shouldn't be able to do that either. It's like, okay, no. so we just don't want people to have choice is what the, what the problem is. Yeah, yeah. People are often worried about their child getting bullied, or um, yeah. this, this comes down to a very common thing amongst not you know intersex male and female genital cutting cultures is that they want their child to grow up and be able to have you know find a partner, a sexual partner, or or at least not get bullied in in school or or whatever by their peers. Right. Um, my my response to that as a parent is well, first of all, don't be your child's first bully don't, don't teach your children to give in to bullies and teach them that consent matters because if you're telling them right away that consent doesn't matter then uh, well guess what rape <laughs> yeah my rape. body my choice applies to both yeah you know and uh, so many times i hear women saying well it's my body my choice and then they go and have their child circumcised because it's not yep. his choice or his body it's like, well, wait. <laughs> or, or, or normalized or whatever. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. exactly. And, yeah. Yeah. And, and people think that, you know, the female, the female circumcision thing is all completely different and it's only to, you know, repress sexuality. But it's you watch them enough FGM documentaries and you learn very clearly that that's not completely the whole, whole story. They want, I mean, it comes down to economics and aesthetics um, and other things. They, they want, again, to be able to, sell their daughter or you know give their daughter yeah. away and if they aren't if their daughter isn't circumcised in their culture then they are less valuable right in, in, in those cultures horrifying yeah i don't know which part's horrifying selling your daughter or having your daughter surgically altered so you could sell her for more money yeah and and in a lot of the fgm cultures it, it, you know selling or, or um or forced marriage is a, is another issue and it's all intertwined yeah so that's horrifying anyway um change the subject <laughs> um bloodstained men did a fundraiser for a billboard here in las vegas where i hang out january 19th january 19th it goes up yeah yep do you know the location uh i was shared on um facebook yesterday uh yeah i i i had it and set a reminder, and I don't have it in front of me at the moment. But um, yeah, um, actually, I, I've got that's it all right though. Map, but... but the uh, fundraiser is the Bloodstained Men's Las Vegas billboard. Is that correct? Yep. Because even though we met all the um, financial goals we needed to get the sign up, and the more money we can get there at this point, the longer the sign will stay up. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be up for two months this time. So that's, that's awesome. kind of exciting. So yeah. why don't we make it four months and everybody keep donating to that page? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, there's a couple of events that are associated with it. Two of them I know of where um, bloodstained men from around the country are going to come and stand in front of nearby somewhere around the sign and protest. And they're doing that twice. They're actually coming to Vegas twice. We're the yep. first stop and the last stop. Yeah, they're going to do a circle and, um, out to Texas and back. Yes, because there's several billboards that they are going to um, be bringing attention to. Yes? Yep. Um, and, and people can find out more on, you know, bloodseamen.com. There you go. <laughs> if you want to. But, um, yeah, there's a there's an events section that talks about the whole 
all the plans and i uh, hope that people out there that are watching can uh can join and, and yeah they create a facebook time. event for it as well for las vegas at least i know yep. and um so you could look for it that way if you want to um how much time we got oh we got like 10 minutes that's cool um all right so where are we going on this yeah they got their the first location is park avenue and south las vegas boulevard i think that's where the sign is gonna be okay Park Avenue and South Las Vegas Boulevard. Yep. All right. Trying to think that's over by the Arts District, but uh, I'm still kind of vague to my city. I've only been here a few years. <laughs> but all right. So, um, what things are you currently working on? Uh, uh, well, I'm having a meeting here soon. Uh, there's a lot of websites out there, uh, websites that I refer people to and websites that I know many other um, intactivists or gentle autonomy advocates refer people to all the time that has some great materials out there. Problem is, is these websites are getting a little old, um, dated. They're uh, they're like Web 1.0 versus Web 3.0. <laughs> right. uh, they, uh, they're dropping down the the list on, uh, on Google search engines. Uh, which is referred to as SEO, search engine yeah. optimization, um, as well as other search engines. And uh, so I, again, I'm an IT guy, so I, I know a little bit about this technology stuff and I'm trying to work with these, the owners and the webmasters of these websites to improve them um, so they get the rankings back up. Right. And Juliana, thanks for being here. We appreciate you watching the show today um all right so um you're working on that and helping them get their on the google search because that's a good thing because if you're an intersex person you've just found out about it you don't know anything about it and do you happen to accidentally google girls with penises or boys with vaginas um you get 17 pages of porn before you get to <sighs> a page that tells you that there's a medical situation that has something to do with this. And it's extremely dehumanizing. So. <laughs> yeah, um, same sort of thing. If you type in the word circumcision, the, like the first thing that pops up is Mayo Clinic, and which is very biased and they, they don't provide um, complete or honest information. They definitely don't right. provide you uh, with information about the anatomy and functions. Now, that was the thing I've been trying to hit on this whole time. There's myths about why we should circumcise our children as far as being able to stay clean or um, not getting AIDS, things of that nature. Um, can you address some of those myths for me? Um, well, the whole STI claim has really been, I think, pretty well clearly debunked. The, the Canadian study is was huge. It involved a lot of people uh, a lot of males in that study, um, and, and and then you got the Denmark study, and these studies not only did they find that there's like really no correlation, um, there's also you can actually find that some SDIs are actually higher if you're if you're missing your prep use, then <laughs> right? right. So yeah, um, hygiene. My yeah. attitude is. Hey, if females can clean their stuff down there, males can too. <laughs> uh, the only the only things that I hear about that males suffer from are like the same sort of things that females suffer from. Um, UTIs, which they get antibiotics for, right? Um, right? Males are far less likely to get UTIs, particularly because of the length of the ureter. Um, and uh, yeast infections. Go to a, a pharmacy and look at the whole section on on feminine hygiene products they apply to the intact man. Yeah. <laughs> they call them yeah. feminine, but you know, you know, like you need a monostat to deal with these inspections. Uh, you don't need to be cutting anything off. They, they could like advertise that and make people realize that, hey, yeah, they, it might happen and here's what you do about it. Yeah. Most of the women will be like, well, yep, yeah, in there, done that. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and, and some people will refer to the cancer thing. It's like, what? It's like a one one thousand lifetime risk, and it only affects older men that you know have 
other health problems. So, you know, what else are you going to cut off your body just because cancer might happen? I mean, Bob Marty died from getting cancer of one of his toes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. And yeah. even the American Cancer Society says, no, AP, don't use that. That's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, there's a whole lot of body parts that can turn on you. And, exactly. Uh, you never know which one. <laughs> yeah. So we shouldn't enjoy be able to enjoy our body parts just because they might, you know, become a problem for us later on in life. No, that's the the argument they use to get a lot of intersex people that learned late in life that they were not late in life, but prior to or shortly prior to puberty, um, yep. they tell them that they have to get their ovo testes removed because they're going to turn in turn cancerous someday or the, or the gonads Maybe. yeah however you yeah, well, you and, know, uh, yeah. so yeah, I know yeah there, there, there's, a, there's a term that I'd, I'd like to get everyone's support on it's um clitorophallus uh, i've i first heard it from brian Earp, and then i heard it from, um brian shared something else that um another um scientist used the same term clitorophallus or he actually brian used clitoropenis but um clitorophallus basically meaning the you know either the penis or the clitoris which is the same thing in, in utero and right. depends right. on how it grows um <laughs> it it's a term that i'd like to see get onto intact wiki and i i submitted an article to try to get it added to intact wiki but they so far declined it they because it's not commonly used enough in um in the news or in, in literature and stuff like that right say it again clitrophallus Clitoral. I'll, I'll put it in the, in the private chat. Okay. Actually, if you could, go to the other one and go to the comments, you can put it there for everybody to see. Uh, it doesn't let me see, put in comments. Private chat. Oh, on comments. It yeah, exist. I I see the chat. I see the comments, but I can't oh. put anything in the comments. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. So I just put it in the private chat. So. There you go. Bosch will. There it is. Care of it for us. Awesome. Bosch has mad yeah. skills. Yeah, so you know, it's you know, again, this is having that term out there um, helps all of us, you know, intersex, uh, male and female, uh, to try to put an end to all this general cutting madness. That that kind of fits into uh, Bosch's two minute elevator speech on what intersex is. Um, maybe he can fit that in there from now on. <laughs> so we'll have yeah. to see what we can do. Cool. All right, then. So we got like two minutes left here. Um, anything that you would like to uh, well, let us know before you go? Like, yeah, so there's, you, all that there's a couple stuff? of lawsuits going on. Um, one to end Medicaid and one to get the AP to change things a little bit. Um, and we know about the outdoor protests. And there's a symposium that's going on from um, Intact America is going to be putting it on this time um, coming up. So intactamerica.org to if you want to be involved or, or watch that um and yeah it, you know it, i implore everyone to share information about this as you know this topic as much as possible um please don't be afraid to and if you need support uh you know reach out to others to to back you up uh, because yeah it can be scary to say anything about this topic uh, because no, yeah, the friends. backlash and everybody's going to hate you. And, yeah. and even if I empathize, I don't know if it's empathy or what, but I understand where people would be a little bit reluctant because they've already done it to their own child. So they really don't want to hear about it. It's like, don't tell me I was wrong. Yeah. You can't tell me I was wrong because I've never been wrong with my child. <laughs> and uh, because no parent ever is wrong with their own child, are they? Uh, <laughs> well, maybe. Yeah. Many times, actually. Mm. <laughs> um, I, like I told my son, it's his job to recover from the things I screwed up. As I try to recover from the things that screwed me up. Yeah, learn better, do better. So, all right, John. Um, I really want to thank you for being here and part of the conversation here on the original Intersex Connect Live. We do appreciate you and all your information. Anybody that needs more information, contact John and or several of the links that are in the chat. Um, we appreciate it. We appreciate everybody being here. And um, John, once again, 
Thank you very much for all your information and your time. It's been very, very informative. I appreciate it. Thank you, Joseph. Thank you.